Meyer Laboratory in Grove City, Ohio. My name is Stan Meyer, and since 1975, the Lord has had me uh, to work on a development of a new energy system to bring in this country. We call this system the water fuel cell technology, and involves the ability to release and produce hydrogen uh, gas economically from ordinary natural water. And in the ensuing years that we've spent in developing this technology, the prime objective was to be able to legalize the technology prior to releasing that technology into the marketplace. And this required a tremendous amount of legal paperwork. And as a result of this, over the years, we have filed well over 42 major patents uh, nationally and internationally on this technology. And give you a little bit of an example of the type of paperwork that was required to try to legalize the water fuel cell technology and actually bring it into the marketplace. There have been several major releases of the technology. One of the areas of technology that we use is in a reference to the dealership sales manual, which really describes in an overall view of the water fuel cell technology and what's involved uh, in actually uh, retrofitting the fuel cell to uh, existing energy systems like that of the car, home heating, electrical generation, and so forth. We also have put together a very large research development laboratory manual that we do not release out in the public domain at this time, which covers the historical event and the step-by-step -step procedure in developing the water fuel cell technology. We have just recently put together and released to certain areas of the military and there's several uh, sections of the uh, federal government as well as to foreign governments the release on a very advanced forms of technology. Uh, in so many times, or in cases of research development, once you start pointing a finger to new technology, you must explore that technology to the fullest extent and bring it into maturity. And the water fuel cell technology covered many aspects that the prior state of the art or the scientific world had no answers to. In my files, I had the most scientific compilation study on hydrogen that's ever come out of the scientific world to NASA. And NASA clearly stated, in fact, that hydrogen was the most ideal fuel of the future, but they needed an answer in three major areas. Number one, produce the gas economically. Secondly, control the rate of its production. Thirdly, adjust the burn rate of the hydrogen gas to co-equal that of the fossil fuels. And we added a fourth step to be able to transport the hydrogen gas without spark ignition. We own all the patent rights both nationally and internationally in this technology. The technology was further developed to a process which we call a hydrogen fracturing process, which bypassed the scientific endeavor of developing hydrogen fusion. In this particular process, we can tap into the atomic yield of water and release it under control state in our laboratories or uh, under normal room conditions and control the release of that energy. Calculations have shown that tapping into the atomic yield of water, that that energy yield can exceed up to the 2.5 million barrels of oil per gallon of water. Basically, the hydrogen fracturing process utilizes a patented electronic circuit, which we call a voltage intensifier circuit. We also develop another patented circuit called electron extraction circuit to you be utilized with the hydrogen fracturing process that gives us the ability to disrupt the formation of the water molecule when the hydrogen and oxygen gases are being ignited. And by preventing the water molecule to take place during gas ignition, then we have an avalanche effect, and now we cross over to release this atomic energy. This type of energy yield can be utilized throughout our entire economy and all segments of the economy and do it on a control state. It's technology has the ability that we can retrofit to existing aircraft and run existing airplanes off of water as well as heat your home, produce electrical energy economically, and also be able to run your car and do it, do it in a very economical way. Give a little bit of credit to uh, our technology and what's actually occurred over a period of 10 years. Whenever you receive your patent, both in the United States as well as in the international market area or in other countries, then, in fact, as you legalize this technology, it says, in fact, that you only control that technology for a period of 17 years. So whenever you receive this little gold seal here, and you see the little red button or a little ribbon down here, 
It says in that actually, in fact, that you have complied with the laws of the land, and therefore you're entitled to bring this technology out into the marketplace without opposition uh, to do so. And as a result, you can see that over the years in development, we have received a multiplicity of patents uh, pertaining to the technology, both in the United States and in other countries. Very recently, Canada has just released all of the major technology, even including the mother technology, and has actually given us top priority in their country to bring this technology even into Canada. This is also now occurring both in all of Europe, Japan, and other countries, as well as the United States. It's extremely important that, as we mentioned earlier, to legalize the technology first and then bring it out into the marketplace, and this is exactly what we're doing. Many long hours have been spent now taking the technology of the water fuel cell and translate it into a pre-engineering model in order for us to be able to comply with all the federal, state, local, and highway safety code regulations. The main thrust of the water fuel cell technology in using water as the new energy source is that the technology must be able to retrofit directly to existing energy consuming devices like your car or install the technology into a home or apply that technology to industry. As an example of this form of development of technology, this is an example of a quenching circuit technology which has the ability to prevent anti-spark back into the system. This was developed in such a way that we now can comply with those existing laws. Other examples of work in development, we had to develop our own electronic circuits designs capable of performing the function of the water fuel cell and do it under extreme safety conditions where we have an automatic shutdown in the system. Fuel cell involves very high technology, but we have reduced it down to a very simple form. We had found out through the electrical polarization process that once you expose the water molecule to a very high pulse voltage frequency while restricting amp flow, the water molecule be takes on an electrical charge which automatically switches off the covalent bonding and as a result we're now producing hydrogen gas from water economically and therefore complying to NASA's first requirement to produce hydrogen and oxygen gas economically. By simply attenuating the high pulse frequency to a higher voltage level, we now could be able to control the production of the hydrogen gas on demand. In order to take over in a dead short condition in order to perform the electrical polarization process, we had to develop a new patented electronic circuit which we call a voltage intensifier circuit. This circuit allows amp restriction while attenuating the voltage potential in order to produce the hydrogen gas on demand. The end to the process in order to cause the water molecules in the atoms to go into a higher energy state which actually aids the electrical polarization process. By subjecting the water molecule to the high pulse voltage frequency and attenuating the voltage amplitude now allows the water molecule to go into a state of ionization. This led to the development of the resonant cavity technology, which now gives us the ability to produce a very quantum leap in hydrogen gas production while we're keeping power input into a very minimal stage. We also found out that in our development that by simply staircasing or simply causing the resonant cavities to be stacked in a vertical array, the electrical ionized gases of one cavity enters into another cavity, which enters into another cavity to perform a compounding action that greatly enhanced the production of hydrogen gas on demand. The gas that's being liberated from the water molecule through the resonant cavity technology now enters into what we call a fuel gas processor. The combustible gas ions are now subjected to a much higher pulse voltage frequency while being subjected to even a higher intensity of laser energy. This causes the, causes the combustible gas ions to go into a high energy state, causing electrons to be released from those combustible gas ions. Combustible gas ions into a much higher energy state. We had now to develop an electron extraction circuit that had the ability not only to pull off the electrons from the combustible gas ions, but also consume those electrons in such a way that those electrons could no longer influence the combustible gas ion. The gas processor, which we had assembled in order to test out the principle of the hydrogen fracturing process that gives us the ability to tap into the atomic yield of water. This research lab model can be miniaturized down to the size of a spark plug or even smaller in actual practical manufacturing applications in order to retrofit to existing energy consuming devices. The fuel gas processor now is actually retrofitted on top of the series of resonant cavities that are arranged in a vertical array. 
much like what you see in this slide at the present time. The injector system is automatically controlled with the voltage intensifier circuits, which now allows the production of the energy to be controlled on a demand basis. The manufacturing process simply occurs by preventing the formation of the water molecule during thermal gas ignition of the ionized gases, causing an avalanche effect that releases thermal explosive energy under controlled state. The fracturing process is totally and completely environmentally safe on a controlled state and can be retrofitted to any existing energy consuming device within the economy. It's been expanded in the area of developing what we call an electrical particle generator that has the ability to move and attenuate a magnetized gas in such a way as to produce electrical energy on the take one. In order to make the electrical particle generator commercially operable, we also had to develop a way and technique to manufacture a permanent magnetized gas. An electrical particle generator is now being combined with the hydrogen fracturing process to produce a modular water fuel cell unit that will lend itself to mass production. The process is not only being applied to the home heating system, but it is also now being applied to the water powered car, which was successfully demonstrated on ABC Good Morning America. Okay. Your fuel cell. In a lot of those respects, we've been able to acquire a great piece of ground located in Washington Courthouse, Ohio, to be the new future home for water fuel cell. Charlie, what do you think of this acquisition? Well, I think we've been very fortunate in picking up this piece of property with the airport on it, which gives us a 4,800-foot strip. Also, plus, uh, we have Baltimore and Ohio Railroad on it. This should give us everything that we need to really have a, a full development of water fuel cell, and uh, I feel we've been very fortunate in picking up this product. Well, another add to this thing is that we're right on the outskirts of Washington Courthouse, which will eventually give us access to their water system, their sewage system, and their other utilities, as well as eventually we'll, we might have access to additional land up through in this given territory here, mine to two or three hundred acres more. I think we was real, uh, they really helped us out when they rezoned that land for us and really, I, I think. In addition to corporate financing, Water Fuel Cell is also holding dealership seminars for those who will be interested to install the Water Fuel Cell.